day and he had to throw in that rain. He got rave reviews for his performance after not throwing at the Combine. Darnold had a private workout with the Browns earlier this week. And one AFC executive told Albert Breer of Monday Morning Quarterback, quote, he's going number one. Chin, how impressed were you by Darnold? I was very, I was very impressed. And Skip, I didn't see the entire workout, but given the circumstances, what's at stake, uh, it's raining. That was as good a pro day I've seen from a quarterback in say the last, well, since I've been watching him. This was very impressive. Mm -hmm. No, no, you know, you hear guys say, man, I don't mind playing in the cold. I don't mind playing in the heat, even the snow. But how many quarterbacks have you ever heard say, man, I love throwing that ball in the rain. And that's what he had to do. He had a job interview with less than favorable circumstances. Because he didn't throw at the combine, he was up against the clock. Because if he threw, had thrown at the combine, he could say, you know what, guys? Come back another day when it's not raining, and I'll be able to throw it for you. But he said, look, it's raining. I got to get this on tape night. It was reported that he had worked out on Sunday or, or a couple of days earlier for the Cleveland Browns. But I love what he said after the fact. He said, I had a lot of other teammates that it was their pro day also, and I didn't want to let them down. Mm. So that tells me a lot, Skip. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. I, I love, I love what I saw, mm. and uh, not a whole lot of quarterback. I hated, I hated playing in the rain. There are three, three things that like playing in the rain: kids, pigs, and ducks. Mm. Grown-ups don't like playing in the rain, mm. especially quarterbacks. Mm. Now I played with one John Elway. He hated the rain. Hell, I hated the rain. I, and, and it's not like it was in a phone booth where he was. He's throwing a wet ball. I'm trying to catch a wet ball. And and coaches don't, hey, you got to make that play. Fans, and you know, they're sitting in the rain. And, and with, we expect you to make that play. So it's not easy. And for him to go out there and put on that kind of throwing performance, Kip, I was very, very impressed. And let me tell you something about O'Shea Sharp, Joy Taylor. It takes a lot to impress me when it comes to football because I've seen a whole lot and I've played with some great players. But I was impressed with the way this young man threw the football. There's no question in my mind. The Cleveland Browns are taking him first overall. Mm. This is absurd to me. I wasn't impressed or unimpressed. I was just non-pressed. I'm an inventive <laughs> word, non-pressed. I don't care what he did in the rain or not the rain. And by the way, what I've always been taught by the many coaches I covered, going back to Don Shulin, Tom Landry, and Jimmy Johnson, and Bill Walsh. Those guys taught me that the tougher element to throw in is wind. And yeah. Jimmy Johnson came back from Troy Aikman's pro day, which was staged at UCLA, not too far from USC. Not too far from where we are. On an extremely windy day coming off the Pacific Ocean. And the first thing Jimmy told me when he got back was, I love this kid because he could throw bullets into the wind. He was splitting the wind with his arm strength because mm -hmm. Troy had big mid-ranged arm strength. Mm -hmm. Not the greatest deep throw, but boy, could he throw rockets into the wind mm -hmm. to split the wind. So to me, if you throw accurately in the wind, it's more impressive than throwing in the rain. And I get what you mean, uh, talk about the wet ball. Troy actually had a hard time with the wet ball. Phil Sims had a hard time. A with lot the of ball. quarterbacks. Some, some, and some really like it. It's just, it's a weird phenomenon depending on your hand size. Right. But, or your, your grip strength. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I'm back to watch the tape. What happened to Sam Darnold last year? This is what I saw happen. Coming off that huge, sensational Rose Bowl game. Remember that? The 52-49 yes. to 49 win over Penn State. Mm -hmm. The walk-off field goal game in which he was 33-53 for 453 and five touchdowns to one interception. The world said, let there be Heisman, Sam Darnold. Mm -hmm. Did he not come in as the, the odds yeah, on he, favorite? Yep. And I saw a kid who seems like a really good kid who tries too hard, and he crumbled under the, the expectations to live up to his Heisman hype. Mm -hmm. And he had a rough year, man, because he led college football and lost fumbles with eight this year. That is not a good sign. And he threw 13 interceptions, and his sacks went up from six the year before when he didn't start every game. Remember, he started I think the second game yeah. of the year. But he had six sacks the previous year. He got sacked 29 times this year because he was holding the ball too long, trying to do too much, mm -hmm. trying to live up to I'm going to win the Heisman, and I'm going to carry my school to the national championship. Mm -hmm. 
and they lost three games, which is not awful. But he really struggled all year long. And I was highly impressed with what he did in the two-overtime game against Texas because I watched the whole thing late into a Saturday night on, I think it was on FS1, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was. But the point was he lit up a Texas team that finished 7-6. and six. So they, they were pretty good, but they weren't great. great. And that was his signature game because you're the first one to say he got outplayed by Josh Rosen, UCLA, he did, USC. He, he did. And Skip, just because he threw well, uh, threw a wet ball well in rainy conditions mm -hmm. doesn't mean he's going to be a great player. Because I think sometimes, Skip, you know, you try to force plays. I saw a lot of plays. You know, I didn't see all of his games, but he tried to force some throws. You try to, you know, fit balls in situations mm -hmm. where you know you shouldn't. Yep. But you're like, well, I, let, let me just try this. And it backfired. Now, you don't like to see guys have – high turnovers coming into the NFL. Because whatever bad habits that you have com coming out of college, mm -hmm. you normally bring those into the NFL until someone can correct you from those. See, no matter see Jameis Winston. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and even, even, even receivers mm -hmm. fumble. Guys that have a problem fumbling in college, guess what? They bring it to the league. Adrian Peterson hit. They started as great as he's been, Skip. Mm -hmm. Adrian Peterson would put the ball around. And, no doubt. And guys would start to say, you know what? Forget trying to tackle him. Let's tackle the football. Yep, I got but it. But you, you have to be impressed, Skip, into that circumstances because I okay, can't I, recall. I, I, I get it. He, he cared about his teammates who had all prepared for Correct. this day. Yes. So he said, I don't want them to screw up their, their Correct. schedules, yes. you know, their preparation schedule. Let's just do it. Let's just go out there yeah. and play. And, and, again, the Browns are there. Jimmy Haslam, the owner's there, yeah. sitting with his parents up in the stands. Wait, wait, you, who, who, who you said was there? Jimmy Haslam? Yeah. He owned the Browns? Yeah. Oh, man, this man might have gone up there now. Well, and we already know who's who second pick. Who on the clock at the second pick? The Giants. Mm -hmm. Who y'all want? Because when the owner come, when the owner skip, yeah, how many times have you heard of? When the owner shows up, you already know what time it is. Mm -hmm. baby. You know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Saquon, does he been to? I don't know if he. I don't think the owner came to it. I, I don't think the Giants owner goes to. Hold on. Was, was Jimmy has him talking to his parents? <sighs> he was. Oh, wait a minute. Game over. <laughs> well, there's one player who I still like a lot. Named Baker Mayfield. Man, you but, but, okay, but there's no way that Cleveland can take the next Johnny Manziel. There's no, no way. No. They just can't do it. No. Even if there's a hint of Johnny Manziel, <laughs> they cannot risk no. Baker Mayfield. You're right. You're so right. Yeah. I'm good with this. I'm okay. Go ahead and take Sam Darnold, but you better be ready because as the first overall pick, he's going to have Heisman like oh. expectations. Yeah, more yeah. than Heisman because the Heisman is yeah. only for one year. You got expectations for the next 10 years mm -hmm. carrying this franchise. Mm -hmm. So those are a lot loftier than the Heisman because they expect you to play well for one year, win that award, and dip. Mm -hmm. They expect you to play move. The moment you get in there, Skip, people don't care nothing about this. Man, he's a rookie. And? And? Oh, he doesn't have enough help. And? and if, because guess what they say? If you're as good as you say, you make those guys better because everybody, you know, that's what Tom Brady does. So everybody comes in, you got to be Tom Brady year 15 and year one. Mm -hmm. Skip Bayless, that's you. Mm. You put this undue pressure on people. I do not. Yeah, you do. I didn't put any on him, but I don't know. I'm, I don't know. And by the way, Sam Darnold did say one thing in his ESPN interview that threw me a little bit. He said, I don't want to play for a team that doesn't want me. Uh, well, if they don't they want you, you, they're not going to take you, Sam. Yeah. I don't think. His point was, if Cleveland doesn't want me, then... I don't want to play for Cleveland. Well, then they'll take Josh Rosen. Yeah, they'll take yeah. Josh Allen. Yeah. I don't know. Right? Normally, teams draft the player they want. <laughs> that, that, that's that's, that's kind of so. that's well, kinda you know, unless, unless, unless you're the Jets and you tried real hard oh, to get up maybe. high and then you're like, oh, whatever's left. I don't know. No, they, uh, Jets. So y'all listen to Skip Bayless. Well. What is it, Broadway Baker? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Mayfield does Manhattan. I hope, okay, I hope, I hope they take Manhattan. him and he shows up in one of those big fur coats. The, he the, would. He would. Broadway he Joe. He can play, though. He Broadway play. Joe didn't become Broadway and Hill. Just a just point of order now against Sam Darnold. Baker Mayfield had 41 touchdowns to six interceptions. He does not make mistakes. He's a gambler who doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, he makes he mistakes huh? off the field. He's made a couple. Yeah. See, I ain't worried about him on the field, Skip. He might make one on the sideline. Well, what, what, what about when the package store got the mm. open? Huh? Can he drive past it? I don't know. He can't outrun the cop. <laughs> Copy and donut. Know. He doesn't have a great first step, that's for sure. Put Is Dwight Howard booty. back to being a dominant big man? We'll discuss that next.